going on, going on. Golly! Mercy! Man, man, oh man. There we go. That's what I'm talking about right there. You know, the deer rifles are all put up. Hunting season's over. But if you're looking for some big game adventure, today on the G3 Sportsman, that's what we're going to show you right there. Buddy, this right here is what it's all about. Today on the G3 Sportsman, we're back in Oklahoma and we're with the Spoonbill King himself again, <laughs> Mr. Rusty Pritchard. He's going to show us today how we can snag these big spoonbill or paddlefish in the wintertime. A little different technique, but then once again, still the same. Uh, there he is. Right here. And here's the same too, catch and fit. Ooh. There we go. What I was saying is we're doing this a little different. In the spring of the year, when this, when this is really popular, catching uh, these spoonbill, catch them up in the shallows when they're up there to spawn. Well, now these fish are wintering, so they're out in the lake. They're in this deeper water. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a couple of different techniques at how Rusty catches these fish in the wintertime. Tell you what, they feel you know? just the same in the winter as they do in the spring. <laughs> Heavy. I believe you're coming up now. Oh, I'm just shaking. <sighs> Fish had ran over and gotten this line too, so you got six pounds of weight on there. You're cranking too. <laughs> what do you usually tell your customers to get you to get ready for, Rusty? I mean, what do they need to expect? What do they need to bring? I furnish everything on trips. All you have to have is your paddlefish permit and your, and your Oklahoma fishing license. Everything else is furnished. And you can keep a couple of these, can't you? Keep one a day. You can keep yeah, one. Except okay. on Mondays and Fridays, is catch and release only on Mondays and Fridays, which has helped out a lot too. Yeah. Man. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a female. I can get over to it. Got yeah, I got her now. Yeah, that's a good one. Look at the belly on her. Good, oh. good <laughs> Lord. That's what you come down for. Look. <laughs> My God. Grand Lake has the largest population of any lake in the United States for spoonbill. And it's just not anywhere where you can go and, and your average size fish is going to be 25 pounds. Uh, I've noticed the size of the fish are coming up where they've been. Now the limit is one per person per day, which is going to help out a lot. It used to be three per person per day. I mean, on my guide trips, we're averaging 10 fish a day. I've been spoonbill fishing my whole life. It used to just be a springtime event for everybody. There was a season in Oklahoma, it was March 15th to May 15th, where you could keep three a day, but you had to keep everything you caught. Or caught. You couldn't throw anything back. And we got thinking, you know, it, these fish has got to be schooled up year round. So after deer season, you know, we had some time and we'd go out and graph, and, and sure enough, we found these fish up here. And, and these fish will just hang right here till the water temperature gets right and we get a little flow in the river and they'll move up the river. 
you just have to look at your graph and, and dissect this lake down into the river channel. That's where all these fish are going to hang right now. And, and that'll narrow it down for you out here in this open water. Power rod. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, bro. Oh. Ah. He's a real one. Yeah. A decent fish. Handle them. Yeah, that's a good one. You, don't have you got to... it? Got the rod? I got the rod. I got the rod. Ah. Alright, I got her now. <laughs> Ooh, rest a rest minute. That one. Look at there. That's a good little female right there. And ain't nothing little about it. I'm sitting there holding it just so y'all could see it, but I'm telling you, this thing gets heavy and gets heavy real fast right here. Big game adventures with the spoonbill king. <laughs> this is a this is an average this is what you'll be catching in. That's an average female, yeah. That's yeah. that's probably a forty yeah. Probably 40, 42 pound I fish. You, every bit of it right here. This is <laughs> this is some fun fishing right here. There's no question about it. Absolutely a ball right here. I'll tell you what, you know, the conservation department down here is doing a lot of stuff to ensure the quality and this uh, to ensure this great fishery right here in uh, Oklahoma and especially right here in Grand Lake. We'll run over and we'll take a look at some of the guys that are over here netting some of these fish and tagging them. It's pretty interesting stuff, so let's go over there while we uh, get this fish released. Pretty cool what we've got out here today. We're here with the uh, Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation here. And I didn't catch your name. It's My name's Tim Miller, a paddlefish biologist. Tim Miller and? Jason Schooley, also a paddlefish biologist. These guys right here, what they do each year, they come out here and they, and they catch these paddlefish and they tag them and get all the information on here. And that's why we have such an abundant supply of paddlefish here in Grand Lake and in Oklahoma is because of all these guys out here and what they do to conserve and to help with the numbers and, and, and get data on these fish to where here's where we, they can keep an adequate supply of numbers. Okay, once we pull the fish into the tub, we uh, get the sex on them, which if you can see, these white bumps called tubercles, that's uh, real prevalent in the males, and that lets us know that it's mature. So we have a male, Check both sides for any kind of marking, such as it had a hook scar, but it's missing a fin. This one here has a hook scar. Right there, it, is, it has been hooked. It's healed back over, so this was probably caught last year. It could be caught in the years past. Here's a gold band. That represents that it was tagged this year. We're putting it on the left side. Uh, it's a G18389. Each fish has an individual code. We'll install these bands on the jawbone of the fish. Uh, it doesn't interfere with their feeding or their lifestyle at all. Uh, they can actually retain it. We still catch fish that we banded in 2003. So we also take the length and the weight of each fish. And if it comes through our RPC, we can then uh, weigh and measure it again. And that will tell us how much it's grown since we've caught it last. Those bands pretty much give each fish a social security card and we can track each individual fish over time. We really do appreciate it. 
Thank you very much. Great guys right there, man. That was all right. That was pretty cool right there. Reason why we got big paddlefish in here and lots of them. And boys right there. They take care of it out here. Whew, I'm wore out and I didn't even do anything. Hey, let's catch more paddlefish, Rusty. Let's dry up here for a while. Okay. I saw a big old school up here. All I'm doing when I'm letting these lines out, you can hear the clicker. I'll let it free spool. You'll hear it slow down when it hits the bottom. Right there, and I'll let just a little more out. Because when you lock it down, the weights are gonna plane up a little bit. Then I'll just let a little more out. And that way you know you're right on the bottom. It's, it's a lot like trolling. You know, if you had big plugs or whatever out here trolling, and, uh, but you're, instead of waiting for the fish to come up and hit your bait as we're moving, we're trying to just hook the, hook the fish. You tell. There he is. That's a little bigger fish. Good. Oh, yeah. That's one you looking for? You want him? <laughs> I'll give you the satisfaction and I'll try to get these in. Let me uh, go over me. I need to. Okay. Yeah, it wear you down. <laughs> this one's in. It's teamwork here, boys and girls. <laughs> teamwork. Okay. You're clear on these, right? Yeah, I'm all clear here. I think we're fine now. Okay. We could just about make a whole show just him reeling in one fish, but we're not going to do that. <laughs> But it's pretty cool because, and that's the one thing, you've got to be down there deeper this time of year, don't you? They're down there all the way in the bottom, 60 foot down. You gotta, and then you gotta, you're out, so you're looking at 80 yards, probably. So that's 240 feet of reeling this in. A little bigger. Boy, you did right in the tail. Boy, I mean, you got him lasso, brother. I'm gonna work him to the front. He ain't coming off, I don't think. Boy, I'm not the experienced spoon biller like you. I can get it. Oh. A little unorthodox, grab him by the snoot. There we go. <laughs> hey. Mercy. Proof's in the pudding today with the Spoonbill King here, old Rusty Pritchard down here on Grand Lake, Oklahoma. If you like to catch Spoonbill and you like to catch them in the spring or would like to catch them in a different time of year, Rusty knows how to do it just, just about all year, all can't year. you? All year long. They're fun, to, they're fun to catch. They give you a fight. It don't take very many of them to have a mess. And I'll tell you what, you, you've seen on today's show how the, how the Oklahoma Fisheries Department here takes care of these fish and keeps them in here. And this is why we've got a good population of Spoonbill because everybody cares here in Oklahoma, don't they? That's right. It, it's, I mean, we're in sweatshirts today, you know. It's not real cold out here and, and uh, the hunting season's starting to wind down. This kind of gives you a little little something to do between, you know, the, the warm uh, fishing season and, and uh, deer season here. Uh, as you can see, I mean, we're catching some, some big fish here, you know. But you can see what we've been doing, you've seen that, just kind of cruising. Just idle speed, about four, four and a half mile an hour, out here in the, basically out here in the middle of the lake over here by the channel, and just waiting for it to come through to be able to just snag one of them fish. It sure beats sitting here with a rod and reel trying to pull <laughs> three pounds at a time like the old days, and there's no way. Seeing these uh, healed up hook scars is really kind of important because in 2010, we made a regulation change to where Mondays and Fridays were catch and release only. And uh, some people were upset about that, saying that catch and release is bad for the fish. Uh, they don't survive being hooked. Well, to the contrary, we're actually finding that more than 10% of the fish we pull on this boat have been caught before. And that's uh, really telling. It gives us an idea that these guys are really hardy and they can handle being caught. 
you know, some of the equipment that you'll see on the on the show, like this, it's a, as the barbless hooks here, and some of the line that we're using right here is available on your website too, That's because you've got your own website now that you can buy this gear with, BoombillKing.com. That's right. And uh, it's it's really helping a lot of people. A lot of people getting on here, and and not only can you use some of this stuff for spoon building, but you know, some of this tug of war line you can use uh, for catfishing or right. or anything. And, it's a really good website that he can go on, that you guys can go on there. He found out that once he's had people out here and shown them how to catch these spoonbills up, they want to do it for themselves. Really no place to buy this stuff. Well, there is a place now. That's right. Right here at old Rusty Spoonbillking.com, man. That's, that's the place to go for your spoonbill <laughs> uh, tackle and everything. Because I get on there and they've just got a number of things over there that'll help you guys become better spoonbill fishermen, too. You know, these fish are every which way in that pod and whatever. And the way we're going, you're most likely, you want to fish this way where you'd have more fish to be able to, you know, get the hook in. This way, of course, you don't have as much. So you, the, the fish that you mainly catch would be this way. It's, it's a lot like trolling. You know, if you had big plugs or whatever out here trolling, and, uh, but you're, instead of waiting for the fish, to come up and hit your bait as we're moving, we're trying to just hook the hook the fish. Oh, there's one on, one on. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> He's stripping. Let's keep him on. Mm. You getting close? Well. I think it's mm, it's coming up to the surface, see? Yeah. That's a decent fish there. Yeah, that's a little bigger. Yeah, that's a nice one. He broke the weights <sighs> off. He's just barely hooked. He is just barely hooked. Them barbless hooks and my good. Alright, Rusty. You you gotta do your thing there, bro. I don't know what to do just other than bringing it to you. It's kind of up to you now. Just pull that rod real tight. Watch this. Right out. <laughs> now, this is the way to cap off a day right here. Get over <laughs> here, son. Right here, Spoonville Fishing, Grand Lake, Oklahoma. Right here with Rusty Pritchard. Boys, it don't get no better than this. You want the best fun excitement you do with a rod and reel? This is it right here. Thank you, Rusty. No problem. I really appreciate it. That's We've a, had a big time. That's a nice fish there. That is a big fish. I ain't gonna sit here and say too much because it's, it's about to wear me out. I'm already tired. I'm, I'm, I'm spent from catching these fish, but that's all the time we got for this week's show, and we've had a ball, no doubt about it. But just remember, we'll be out there somewhere next week, right here on the G3 Sportsman, and hopefully in a little better shape. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Man, let's let her go. Let's get a picture of her and let her go. Yeah, what do you say? yeah, where's your. Because. He's farting on you. <laughs> nah. Jello arms. Woo! <laughs> burn. Oh yeah. I am definitely gonna be sore. Whoa, it's a it's a it's a fun time, no question. Now I'm gonna go take a nap.